and welcome to Arenda Books at Bedtime. I'm Karen Sullivan, publisher of Arenda Books, and we have a real treat in store for you tonight. You'll be hearing from Louise Beach, who'll be reading from her beautiful love story, The Lion Tamer Who Lost. Louise is one of those authors who can turn her hand to anything, and this is her first romance novel, a gay love story, a beautiful gay love story, and in fact, the response has been amazing for this, to the extent that she's been shortlisted for the RNA Most Popular Romantic Fiction Award. The results will be announced tomorrow night, March the 4th, and crossing everything that she wins for this one. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Long ago, Andrew made a childhood wish and kept it in a silver box. When it finally comes true, he wishes it hadn't. Long ago, Ben made a promise and had a dream. To travel to Africa to volunteer at a lion reserve. When he finally makes it, it isn't for the reasons he imagined. Ben and Andrew keep meeting in unexpected places. And the intense relationship that develops seems to be guided by fate, or is it? What if the very thing that draws them together is tainted by past secrets that threaten everything? A dark, consuming drama that shifts from Zimbabwe to England and then back into the past, The Lion Tamer Who Lost is also a devastatingly beautiful love story with a tragic heart. Over to Louise. Good evening. And welcome to Arenda's Bedtime Stories, or Arenda After Dark, as I'm going to call it. Although I will keep it relatively clean, since we're just after eight o'clock. So I'm going to read you a couple of extracts from Line Tamer Who Lost. And hopefully with my Barry White post-cough voice, I'm going to sound very seductive, but not too seductive, even though it's Arenda After Dark. So I'm going to read a short extract from Chapter 27. And then I'm actually going to read you the bit from the end. Doesn't ruin it, just so you know. Okay, here we go. Are you comfortable? Let me just... Um... Okay, comfortable? Then I shall begin. The next day, Andrew handed Ben a birthday gift and he watched him unwrap it far too slowly. Then Ben told him three things. First, he told him he wasn't going back to university. Last, Ben told him he would tell Will about them. The second thing Ben admitted he had struggled with the most. I'm going to take the test, he said. And he paused as though waiting for Andrew to object. I'll see if I can check if I'm a match. Then I can make you well. I know the odds are ridiculous, but I can't not try. I can't, and you can't stop me. Andrew didn't want to. He was immensely moved that Ben would do such a thing. The sun edged across the sky, lingering like a child not wanting to go home for tea. They gazed at one another. Andrew wanted to stay there forever. Dance with me, Ben said later. There's no music, said Andrew. You're the artist, imagine some. Ben, I'm tired. Dance on my feet then. Ben, come on, it's my birthday. So he did. Andrew danced on feet bigger than his. And here also is a little extract from the end. Let's get comfortable, my foot's gone to sleep. <clears throat> The lioness let her cub go. She didn't want to. She knew what danger lurked in the shadows. But she also knew that a lifetime without fight was a lifetime without purpose. The cub ambled at first, like a newborn. All around the horizon hummed with heat and gold. So many golds. Sun, cub, sand, lioness, sun, savannah, cub, forever. The mother felt sad. Her cub looked sad. Because we all want to stay in the place we're loved. But love goes with us. It is light and has easy to grip handles and needs no passport. The mother knew this secret. So she called out to her daughter, run, run, run. The cub heard the words from where far away. She heard the words wherever she went because she had learned that when it seems like there is nothing, that's when you most appreciate everything. 
and that you never dance alone. You are always dancing on the bigger feet of those who loved you first. So that was two extracts from The Lion Tamer Who Lost, which has, um, I want to say, shortlisted for the, um, the Romantic Novel of the Year prize, which it has. So good night. I am off to sleep now, a little bit tired after that reading. So, cheers and good night. Thank you very much for listening. See you next Sunday at 8pm for another episode of A Read the Books at Bedtime.